Hell Sansory here, June 15th, 2017. Good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. This episode marks the first episode of Out of the Box TV. It is now returning to Portland Community Media. I believe now it's been renamed to uh, Open Signal. Very excited about this development. Right now, I am at the one year anniversary since I moved on to One Acre off the grid somewhere in Southwest Colorado. I'm gonna be discussing my one year anniversary and some of my thoughts um, regarding this move. And it took multiple years, folks. It took multiple years for me to escape from Portland, Oregon. I escaped the first time in 2011. And yes, it is a little bit like Escape from New York or Escape from LA. Uh, the movie that hasn't been made, Escape from Portland, but probably should. Perhaps it's going to be a reality. People are living in the future. Also on the table tonight regarding um, what we're looking at in the future. So why do I talk to Portland, Oregon if I'm no longer in Portland, Oregon? Now, I've been doing this about 10 years. Actually, 12 years if we go back to when I started this show in Portland, Oregon on Northeast MLK. And I know what it's like to be a real minority, made up of half Afghani, half Anglo, uh, Saxon genetics. It's what the neo-Nazis now call white genocide. I know what it's like to be called crazy, paranoid, and delusional for speaking about things outside the left and right paradigm. People didn't understand some things that I was discussing a few years ago. I wonder now in 2017. I really do. I really wonder. I really wonder now in this particular day and age if the people of Portland they're going to come across my information if they get some of this or if they're in the same box of judgment and denial that they were in during the Obama administration. So I'm someone that bursts through the left right paradigm. There are little to no people still on cable TV or in the media that are giving you a larger perspective with regards to what's going on. You have virtually no one calling out the white supremacy, left-leaning tribalism in so-called progressive cities like Portland, Oregon. I made a video about that. My goal is to help people that are generally on the path of evolving as spirits and souls. And so by you watching this in the Portland area and knowing what you're surrounded by, the angry protests, Often it seems more like gang violence on both sides than anyone, right? Working for real positive change within the United States. Where are the minorities within Antifa or the Black Bloc? Where is their respect for the voices of other minorities? Why don't you even see Muslims? Why don't you see Muslims amongst Antifa and Black Bloc and Portland protesters? They have their own politically driven agenda. They may hate Donald Trump as I dislike Donald Trump, but Donald Trump has become a scapegoat for Portlanders. Oh, look at the bad man and others. Look at the bad man. Look at the racists that follow him. So all of a sudden, your side of the street is now clean, right? Think about the Obama administration, how many bombs were dropped on innocent Afghanis and Iraqis. How many of you were protesting against those actions? during Obama's presidency. How many of you inside are just excited that you're seeing overt racism to make up for the covert racism and tribalism that your own society is guilty of? See, one of the things that I've been noticing uh, in the uh, post-Donald Trump selection, and I predicted Donald Trump as the elite's selection. People laughed at me then. I've been exiled um, also from the alternative media because my views don't fit in their box, nor does my skin tone. So I'm not going to be silent. There's nothing you can say or do or reject me or put me down uh, now in ways that you haven't already or people like you haven't already. So I spent a long time wondering why Portland left me in the street in 2014. When I came back with nothing and I came back on the air and I said, hey, I came back with nothing. I'm doing a social experiment. I'm doing the home free experiment for the first time in my life. I just happened to do it at a time where a lot of people were home free in Portland. And there's a stereotype. Oh, if you're home free, you must be an addict. You're too talented, Alex. There must be something that you're doing. And so I lived through that. And I survived that. I survived the streets of Portland and came out the other side. And I'm a little agitated that we live in a world where a number of things. 
people gather and come together over who they hate rather than who they support. Okay, it's just something that's taking place. Whether we're talking about the Trump supporters or whether we're talking about the anti-Trump protesters. Hatred, hate, hate is rising. And we're not just talking about hate crimes. We can look at tribalistic, we're going to watch some clips tonight, behavior on the part of the so-called non-racist Portland protesters that are here to save the day and like literally wave the flag of freedom for all minorities and all groups. We stand against hate solidarity. Bullshit. You want to stand against hate, judgment, discrimination? You need to look at yourself. <clears throat> now, I've got dozens, two hundreds of videos discussing white supremacy, Donald Trump, how it's being used to hurt white people. I discuss Alex Jones, a person who is very different 10 years ago. Now, I want people to get it because you're not getting real talk from anyone on the left or the right. I want you to get beyond your tribalistic box of only watching and listening to people that look just like you and give me a friggin' chance for once in my life. Alex Jones, right? A lot of popularity that he received from being anti-police state, anti-global government, anti-bombing to the Middle East. Those aren't negative character attributes. That man was saying what few people were saying in the days after 9-11. And the whole point of looking at 9-11 is to realize, wait a minute, and even within the official story of 9-11 and the Saudis involved, why then allow millions of innocent Iraqis and Afghanis to die? Even if you believe the official story. We don't have to go into inside job. Don't you understand, America? We don't have to go there anymore. There are millions of people that had nothing to do with the official 9-11 hijacking story. Where have the protesters been? So people want to ask and wonder, how did it get this bad? How did it get this bad? We have people like Jeremiah, uh, uh, Christian, slitting the throats of three heroes. One Michael Fletcher survived. And people want to go around and go, we don't understand what's... Let's blame it on Donald Trump. Well, wait a minute. Are you really going to say that you refuse to acknowledge those that you called crazy after 9-11 for just simply wanting an investigation? Or just simply wanting people to explain, but why then do millions have to die? And then this narrative built up out of the ashes of the Muslims did 9-11. Some of you supported the narrative and refused to investigate what happened on 9-11. So what has resulted since then and as a result of your apathy? We have this meme of the Islamic invasion that isn't over yet. We have Middle Eastern communities now being targeted by white supremacists on the internet. It's all built out of the ashes of the Muslims did 9-11. Muslims. Muslims did 9-11. Two buildings went down in their footprint. Three. But only two were hit by planes. But see, now you're programmed. Now you're programmed if you've been sucking off the tit of the mainstream media. To think that if someone wants answers regarding that, that they're a radical, that they're racist, that they're violent, that they're anti-government. Lie, 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 lie. But now I understand why Alex Jones was there in the beginning to get the support of the people. And people run around handing out DVDs and Alex Jones became a cult leader. He even influenced a young Alex Ansari in his earlier years. But why was that? My own city failed me. You want to know why some people end up radicalized? See, real progressives, real independent thinkers, we never just receive some information. Oh, this group in this country is behind 9-11. Let's go massacre millions of people. Let's go rape their women. And see, for a society that acts like it has a passion for women's rights, where has your voice been with regards to the millions of dead Afghanis and Iraqis? So honestly, folks, I never really understood why your society rejected me. I never really understood why the city of my birth thought I was a freak until the white supremacy came out in an overt sense. And I began to look closer, and I look at the Portland protests, and I see how a lot of your... Um, your white anarchists and your white black bloc, how they talk to blacks, how they talk to others. 
I mean, really with a tone of, we don't need you. We're going to do things our way. Okay, Kiss off, you freaking fascist, you Nazi. And see, mental illness is rising in America. And it's expressing itself on the left and the right. If you want solutions, you need to look in the mirror and you need to get beyond the ethnocentric attitudes. Okay, You need to recover from this... Um, uh, MSNBC faith or CNN faith or Fox News faith. You need to recover beyond a mentality that there's a difference between the Democrats and Republicans. That there's a difference between Fox News and CNN. Okay, It is all part of the same system that is colonizing the Middle East. That's why Sanders was not against drones in the Middle East. 